Hey, what's going on guys? I'm Mike from Mobox, and this one is gonna be a long tutorial, and it's gonna end up being, of course, some sort of speed art, but this is um, MKBHD's intro. So it kind of changes often, but uh, as of March 5th, 2017, uh, this is his intro. So I'm just gonna show you how it's done. It, it is quite complicated, and there, there are a lot of um, pieces to the puzzle. So, uh, let's just go ahead and jump right in. Okay, to start out, what we're gonna do here is we are going to create the background. So I'm just gonna go composition, new comp. Um, I'm gonna actually make this 10 seconds. And uh, 1920 by 1080 is, is plenty fast. And I'm actually going to make this 29.97 frames per second. Um, normally I do 60, but for this case, because there's a lot of graphical intense stuff, I'm gonna only do 30. So let's start up. So if you notice the background that he has, it's kind of like little dots with like lines drawing across. And I'm gonna kind of show you a technique that I use all the time and it's a duplication technique um, that helps you get really complicated effects very quickly. So uh, let's start. I'm gonna just create uh, two little circles. Start with one circle, I suppose. Um, fill it white. Set the uh, anchor point in the center, Y on the keyboard, drag it to the center, and then use the align tool to align it. So now I'm gonna bring this down till it's pretty small, that's even too big. I'm just gonna hit S on the keyboard and see, maybe 1.5. That looks about right, maybe 1.75. I know that doesn't add too much, um, but maybe two. We'll just we'll just go to two. Uh, we can always change it later, which is the best part of this duplication technique. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create, uh, I'm gonna actually duplicate this three times. I'm just gonna rename this one left left, left center, right center, and right right. So my left left, I went all the way to the left, left center, just off center, right center, just off center, and right right, far right. Um, I'm gonna bring these in a tad. Doesn't have to be perfect. In fact, it looks better if they're not perfect. Um, Maybe even a little bit more. So what I'm basically gonna do is I'm basically gonna have these these just kind of oscillate um, back and forth. So I'm just gonna select all these layers and hit P on the keyboard and set position keyframes. And just kind of start moving them around. Again, like I said, this is gonna be a very long tutorial. Um, there's really no way around it, to be completely honest. Uh, it is a very, uh, it's a very interesting, very detailed intro that, uh, that, you know, takes time if you wanna do it, if you wanna do it right. Just make sure I'm on the right track here. All right. Um, a lot of people like to take shortcuts in motion graphics, and, and I'm guilty of it myself. Um, however, for business related items and for really, you know, things that people are going to be seeing all the time, um, you want to put the time in and do it right. And that sometimes means hand animating stuff. Sometimes that means, um, you know, adding a little bit more than just kind of the, the status quo. Which is exactly what I'm doing here. But again, using the duplication technique, you do get a lot of uh, really good effect um, without having to hand animate a lot of a lot of stuff. So I'm just going to kind of you know balance these out a tad. Select all the layers, hit Alt, and drag it over. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start staggering these keyframes just a bit. There's absolutely no theory behind this other than to just make it a little more complicated um, just kind of adding a little bit of variety here now 
Now what you see is something like this. I'm going to select all these keyframes here. And using my motion toolbox, I'm just going to add some smoothing to it. Looks about right. And now it's time for the little lines in between. And again, if this time base doesn't work for you, um, if you think that that's too fast, don't worry because we could always change it later with a time remapping. So now what I'm gonna do is create a new layer, solid. It, this part, the color literally doesn't matter. I'm just gonna add a color just so it adds some variety um, because we've been looking at a black screen way too long. Now I'm gonna search for an effect called beam. And what this does is it basically creates a beam and it has a start point that you could set an endpoint that you could set, and then you could change the effects here. So what we want to do is we want to link the start points to points on on these dots. So um, I guess first what I'll do is I'll just change the color to white all the way around and uh, decrease the softness. We don't want it to be soft, we want it to be a hard edge. And we could reduce the thickness to be one in one. And I want the length to be 100. So now what I'm gonna do, um, I'm just gonna hit Alt and press the keyframe on the start and end point. And what this allows me to do now is, is grab these, these, um, these pick whips and attach it to position. So basically I can make the start point be at, the, at that position and the end point be at that position. And what that does is that, and it will follow the dots. So I'm just gonna duplicate this and do this for every space in between. Just uh, open these up and attach these to, instead of um, the first two, I'm gonna go from the second one to the third one. And I actually duplicated this one too many times. I'm just gonna delete that duplication. And then this one will go from right center to right right. And now you have something that looks like this. Perfect. Almost, we almost have the background done, believe it or not. <laughs> Um, let's see how many, how much time, eight minutes in, we almost have the background done. So let's see here. Make sure we have uh, these in, in order. Makes it a little bit easier. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start changing their opacity. Press T on the keyboard, set keyframes, and set them all to zero. And basically what I want is I want them to, to show up Make sure you set keyframes all, even though these are still zero across, I set keyframes because um, what you could actually end up doing is let's say you do this, um, and then you say, okay, now I want this to be 100 and this to be zero. Now what you wind up is actually, I mean, that doesn't look bad, but but it doesn't start at zero. It's, it's you know, zero starting here and it's going to 100 as opposed to starting at 100 and going over. So um, it just depends on, on the effect that you want, but that's not the effect that I'm going for. I'm gonna delete that keyframe also. Okay, so that's there. And then I want it to go to zero. Make sure the other keyframes are, whoops. Other keyframes are set. Maybe I want this one to go to 100. And then back to zero. And then maybe this one go to 100. And then this one going to 100. And then this one coming to zero. And then this one coming to zero. Maybe this one goes to 100. Basically, I'm just adding some sort of, you know, make it look a little, have a little bit of variety. And now I'm gonna stagger these as well. I'm 
For these keyframes, I'm gonna do something a little bit different. I'm just gonna highlight them, right click, keyframe assistant, easy in, or sorry, easy ease. Um, I'm not gonna go ahead, go through this whole, this whole. So you have something that kind of looks like that. And you know, again, because this will be duplicated, uh, it doesn't really matter too much. But I'm just gonna move these around. Okay, so there you go. Just gonna kind of space it out a little bit better than it is. It's kind of getting a little tight here. But, okay. So now you have those lines kind of doing their thing. I'm just gonna select all these layers, Control Shift C, and do, call it Line Base. Now what I could do is I could duplicate this layer a couple times, a lot of times, <laughs> and uh, start moving them around. Basically just creating a line out of this. Making sure I go all the way to the end and actually I'm going to duplicate this again. I'm actually going to go slightly off. One in the center. One away. So now what we have is we have something that kind of looks like this. So now to add some variety, you can move these around. And right click them some and go to time. Time reverse layer, and maybe a couple of them reverse the time. What that does is basically just make the animations go in reverse. So one thing I notice is that these lines are happening way too often. So I'm just gonna take these keyframes, delete them, highlight all these, hold alt, and drag this down. And now you wind up with something that kind of looks a little bit, a little bit less uh, extreme. And I even think that these need to be staggered even more. Maybe even a reverse. Reverse a couple of them. So, okay. Now, because this, this, uh, oh, I'm not even gonna get into that yet. I'm just gonna now copy, select all these, hit Control Shift C again, and name this um, Line Base 2. And now I'm gonna duplicate this a bunch of times. I'm gonna open up my grid and just kind of uh, break these up just a tad. So there's one, two, three in between. One, two, three in between. And basically just, I mean, I think you got the idea of what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm basically just separating them out. So I just did one extra, so I'm gonna delete it. And now I'm going to do the exact same thing that I did before. And right click some of them, time reverse. Time reverse. So I think one thing that I do notice is that there is too much, too much happening with those lines still. I 
So I'm just going to hold alt and drag these over. And maybe I'm trying to think how we could solve this. Okay, so what we could do is we, we'll just separate these out without... Uh, without really having them be proportionally spaced out. That way what we're going to end up is with is probably more time in between the lines. So a line happens right here. So we'll make that one shorter. Line happens right there. Can I make that shorter? Oops. Which one is that? It's that one. Uh, So we'll see what this brings us to. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna go back to the line base too. Um, actually, no, this one here. And I'm gonna start and I'm just gonna move them left and right. That's what I needed to do, my bad. My bad boys and girls. So there you go. Now I'm just going to do the exact same thing. Highlight all these. Control Shift C. And create a new comp. And duplicate this a couple times. You know, if, if, if you do it this way, you save a ton of time. <laughs> animating it by hand, all of these. So from here I could also, actually what I wanna do is I wanna make sure these are continuously rasterized all the way across the board. That way you could see all these new layers are here, which means that when I come to my final comp, I could choose kind of where I want it to be. Um, if I didn't do that, it would be cut off in this square. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to now stagger these and reverse some time. So I'm going to reduce this to quarter resolution. Whoa, what is going on there? Ooh, that's strange. Okay, that was weird. For some reason, these um, these lines, if they was if they were continually rasterized, it messes it up for some reason. So they don't need to be rasterized, I guess. There you go. Oh, for some reason, it's still messed up. Um, let's see what is causing this. Ah, uh, I had a duplicated layer there. That was causing the problem likely the whole time. But anyways, okay, so 23 minutes in, we're just getting started now. So now I can just select all these layers, Control Shift C, and uh, make this called the line background. Now we're ready to go. So I'm gonna continually rasterize Select this layer, scale it up, and uh, actually I'm not going to scale it up. I don't need to do anything. I'm just going to leave it right, like just like that. Let's create a new composition. Composition new, 1920 by 1080, 30 frames a second. All this looks good. 
except for this, I'm gonna change this to five seconds. We only need a five second um, intro. And then I'm gonna come here and drag in the line background. So remember, because we staggered it, the layers aren't gonna be showing up all at the same time. So I'm just gonna move this over until all the lines are in game. And since the composition we created earlier was 10 seconds, we have no issue with this falling off or, or anything like that. Um, I noticed that it is a little sparse over here, so I'm just gonna mess with this just a tad bit more, just to ensure that we do have proper coverage. Make sure they don't run into each other. So that's where they cross. Looking right here. Just move them over. Okay. Then we can go back to the, uh, we don't need the line background. Comp two, here we are. I'm just gonna close out all these others. So we don't need them anymore. So I'm just gonna create the background color, layer new, solid. Maybe make it a very dark color. Drag it beneath. Now this line background, I'm gonna again continually rasterize, scale it up a tad, rotate it just a little bit, and uh, decrease the opacity. Something that looks like that. So this is gonna eat up my RAM preview. So I'm gonna bring this down to a quarter resolution. That's good enough for me. So now for the logo intro. Um, it's a very unique um, intro, but uh, we'll try to replicate it as best that we can. So what I'm gonna do here is, what is going on? I'm just going to create a rectangle. It kind of looks like that. Probably looks good enough. Center up the anchor point, Y on the keyboard, drag it right to the center. And uh, let's see what we wanna do. We wanna come into the rectangle contents, right click. Actually, uh, so it might look like this. Rectangle, rectangle path. I'm gonna right click that and convert to Bezier path. If you're using After Effects CS6 or below, you need to hold Alt when you create the shape to get the Bezier path option. So from here, the reason why I did this was I want to, I want to take this, this left arm and kind of drag it up because that's the shape of his logo. And you can't do that unless you um, have the Bezier path available. So I'm just gonna line this into the center. So now we have one half of his, of his intro. Uh, I'm gonna rename this gradient shape. You'll know why in a second. I'm just gonna duplicate it, Control Shift D. And um, for this object, we don't need a fill. Turn the fill off, but we do need a stroke. That stroke looks about right. Um, but for this gradient shape too, I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna do call it outline shape. Make it 3D, hit R on the keyboard and change the orientation 180. Well, for some reason I trimmed those out, but I didn't wanna do that. So because we added a, a, uh, you know, a, whatchamacallit, a, uh, a stroke to it. It's a little larger than it should be. So I'm just going to drag this in. And uh, because the, the way I created this shape, it's not exactly how his is, um, you'll notice that it does kind of, you know, bleed off just a tad, which the only way to get around that is if you, is if you use his exact dimensions um, or come in and uh, and 
make sure you you don't uh well you know what here i, I could do it like this it, it won't be exactly correct but it will be close enough close enough for government work they say Basically, those just have to be perfect, and I didn't make them perfect. Um, so another thing that you'll notice is that it's not quite wide enough. So I'm just going to bring it up to the corner. Bring it down to the corner. So that's pretty close to what his logo looks like. Um, pretty close. But one thing that I noticed is that his is like a little bit more, maybe a little bit more angled. I don't know, that's close enough for government work. So now what I'm gonna do is I need to search for ramp and add the gradient to the gradient shape. Um, selecting the top corner, the start of the gradient, the bottom corner, the end of the gradient. And he uses like a pink, it's like a, this looks like an orange, orange pink to a pink pink. These, I know these colors are totally butchering the color here, but that looks, looks about right. I'm just going to blend with original. No, I'm not. Uh, I'm just going to leave it like that. That looks pretty close to what he does not exactly but what I need to do here now is I need to create I need to make this gradient uh, layer 3d and this outline I need to start messing with it so if you notice here when I change the orientation this will kind of bleed through which is exactly what I want So what I'm basically going to do is just mess with these until I get something that looks pretty good. So we're basically almost, we're basically there. Um, the only difference is, is that where you got some white. So now I could start messing with this orientation. Just like that. And now we basically, if you look in three dimensions, you see this is basically what we did. We basically took the layers and we angled them in a way that they just barely slice in between each other, which is exactly what we wanted. So now we have his logo done. Now all we need is to, you know, now that I'm looking at it, these lines are messed up. <laughs> these lines, there are way too many lines. Way too many lines. Um, I'm gonna delete every in-between line for these. Sorry, these lines are really, I think the bane of my existence at this point. I think I'm, I'm never gonna wanna see lines again I guess the rule of thumb is when you do stuff like this, you need to make sure that, that you take advantage of, of what you create with them. Because they take a long time to make. So that looks a little bit closer. Um, what I'm also gonna do with this line background, I'm gonna right click and go to time, um, time stretch. I'm gonna set this to like 70. And what that basically will do is it's gonna slow down that background animation a lot. Um, I'm gonna even actually time stretch this to maybe even 50. Whoa, actually I'm going the wrong way, am I? Uh, yeah, I'm going the wrong way. <laughs> I need to go time, time stretch. 200 
So it's really going to slow it down. Again, we need to make sure, make it so all of the layers are in place. They're not popping in, just like that. And there you have it. So now I need to make this kind of thing fly in and, and insert itself right into the logo. I'm sure if MKBHD watches this video, he's gonna say, oh man, your logo angles are messed up. And, and I could tell, like I'm looking at the, his logo and it's definitely messed up, but it looks pretty good. I mean, give me a break, man. <laughs> so what I need to do is for this gradient shape, um, I'm gonna just search path. Set a path keyframe and a position keyframe. P on the keyboard, set a position keyframe. Now you on the keyboard, and now we're ready to animate this logo. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just, I'm, I'm just gonna give myself some, uh, some lines so I know kind of the position direction I, I need it to go. You'll understand in, in a second why I need these lines, but if I didn't have them, um, it would be incredibly hard to move this in a position in a in a position, right? So without the line, I might say, okay, does that look like the right angle? Is that the right angle? Is that the right angle? Truth is, is that like that's the right angle. So you can see there that it's just it's just barely slicing, so we could come in here, hit R on the keyboard again, and just kind of get a, it's just a, it's a very thin margin of, of where this can slice in. So pressing U on the keyboard, and then J on the keyboard, snapping back to this. I'm going to come back into this path information, and Bring that down to zero, near zero. I think um, in terms of position, I, I think I actually want it to start around there. So I'm just gonna set a position keyframe and then drag it back and cover up that position. And so now you have something that kind of looks like that. I could now delete this guide layer. And I basically need to do the exact same thing, but for the outline shape. So pressing um, or looking for the path, contents rectangle path, setting a keyframe, position, set a keyframe, U on the keyboard, G on the keyboard. So now again, I'm gonna use, um, I'm actually gonna duplicate this layer and lock it and use this as my template. I'm just gonna decrease the, the opacity. And now I'm gonna make this kind of come start from down there and make the path, bring the path closed. For some reason, I always have a hard time getting the path. So I can now delete this, uh, that extra layer created and now you have something that kind of looks like that. So for this outline, I'm just going to go to the last keyframe, hit alt, uh, left bracket and it'll close it off. And so it kind of looks like that. I'm actually going to do the exact same thing for the gradient. So what you'll notice is actually um, the the outline shape happens a lot sooner and then the gradient pops in. And the gradient pops in pretty fast and the outline kind of almost bounces in. Kind of like that. Now that happens way too fast. 
Uh, so I'm just going to extend this out. Take a look at that. So I get kind of a weird graphical effect there, so I'm just going to have it open from there. That looks pretty good. If you add some motion blur to this. So again, I'm also getting some artifacting there. So I'm just going to close that off and have it start there. Again, this is happening so fast you won't even notice. So one last thing that you'll notice in his intro is a strange thing where these lines kind of kind of crisscross and 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 kind of precurse precurse his intro coming in. So to do that, uh, just coming back here. For some reason, these gradient colors are driving me insane, so I'm just going to sample his colors. Oh, that looks way off. Those are those are actually the colors he uses, and his background is actually uh, is actually like uh, that color. So, anyways, those are the colors he uses. Not my first choice, but um, basically it's very similar to what I would choose. So let's see. Back to the lines, not those lines, luckily, in which they're not perfect. His are his are a little bit different than this, but it's very similar. You just have to mess with them longer and 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 make them more professionally done. Um, it just takes time, right? So. Um, one thing I can do to make them look a little bit better is make the starting thickness 1.5 for across the board. So does that change anything? I think do four just to be safe. Can't type for some reason. Oof. I don't like that at all. Going back to my one. Okay, so I'm gonna basically, uh, let's see, how do I wanna do this? Um, I could just use the pen tool and just totally mess it up. That was fast. Bring the size down. And kind of line these up. Doesn't have to be perfect. And um, here's the problem that I'm going to face. I'm actually not going to do that. I'm going to create a straight line. get maybe 2.5 pixels and can I trim paths with this is the question and I can trim paths which is good so 
I'm just going to animate this line and then copy and paste it a bunch of times. So come down to add trim paths. And let's see what this, what I could do with this. By setting keyframes, going to 100, going to 100, adding some smoothing. Can increase the scale. And now I can start moving into place. I move this anchor point onto the actual line. Be a little bit easier when I rotate. I duplicate it and bring it down. This is like slowly going from an from a from a uh, from a tutorial into just me doing this and you watching because it gets very complicated. So I'm just going to select these, Control Control D, and now rotate them um, twenty point two. So it's basically the opposite, uh, not quite there, but uh, that looks about right. Now these kind of do some something a little bit unique. These are doubled up. So I'm gonna double them up also. Control D, bring it down. Control D, bring it up. So now what I can do, seeing where all these kind of are at, I need these to be way earlier. So I'm gonna just slightly stagger these. Right, so these are the first four. Just like that. And now I need these Be there. And I'm just going to stagger these as well. And now all I need to do is just select these and bring the opacity down to maybe, I don't know, 80 or maybe even 50. And uh, I could bring the stroke down to maybe two, or let's say 1.5, and see what that looks like. And bring this down to, to a third of the resolution. So I like these, but these just need to kind of have maybe even more stagger to them. Kind of like that. Very, uh, very quote simple um, to do, but um, anyways, okay. So we're almost done now. Uh, I'm getting tired, but we are almost done. Now all we need is, is 
I'm just gonna press select these, press U on the keyboard, get rid of those. This outline shape, I need to add a trim path to it now. So opening this bad boy up, it's like um, a monster. Go trim paths. And you can see that it starts there. I need to offset it to start right there. So now what I can do is select an end keyframe there and close that off. Add some smoothing to it. And now it's time to make the gradient blink out. So you just set opacity. Um, there might be an After Effects built-in preset. I'm not sure, to be honest. Um, so I'm just going to do it by hand, which means it won't look great, but it might. Just kind of pretty clear what I'm doing here. Oh, I think I'm, these might have been messed up. Right, so now they're in the right spot. So let's see what that looks like. So one thing I noticed is that you could actually see that line and I don't like to see that line. So what I'm going to do is I need to keep this keyframe right because this shape does open up and I don't want it to be trimmed. But what I want to do here, making that invisible, I need to mess with these with these trimmed paths to make it uh, to make it work. So let's see, it's under trim paths. And it ain't perfect, but um, I know what I can do. This is kind of cheating, but it has to be done. I'm just going to manually mask this out. <laughs> so just created, oh crap, I did it on the outline shape. Did not want to do that. For little things like this, cheating, no problem. Because in the end, it's a very, very minor, minor cheat that will not um, carry over. So I'm going to rename this outline mask. Put it over the outline. And change this to alpha inverted. And I don't need it until now. So I'm just going to Alt uh, left bracket and close it off. So that way it's not visible then. But it is visible now. What the heck? Why aren't thou working? Oh, because it doesn't have a fill. My bad. Ooh. Probably use, use a little bit of work to make sure it's right. But. Now you have it. Well, wow, that happens so fast. <laughs> I'm just going to select all these, Alt, drag this out. And I'm going to just mess with these a little bit more. I think that... Uh, It 
it's like really fast. That that happens. Now we are almost done. Can you believe it? I can't. <laughs> I'm just gonna select all these layers now. Control Shift C. We're almost done. I'm just gonna name it Final, just as a final, final lap. Uh, I'm just gonna close those out. So we have the intro kind of flying in and then blinking out. I think that happens a tad bit too fast. I would like the intro to start now. So, selecting, just gonna move the keyframes. Can I re-lengthen these? Again, we gotta shorten them. Remember they had a little bit of artifacting going on. Just like that. Then it closes off. And his might last a little bit longer. It probably doesn't. Most intros should be done as soon as you as soon as possible. Um, pro tip. But I'm just going to kind of just mess with these just a tad bit more. And then it ends. And the ending should probably not take as long as it does. Just highlight, drag it off. Change the motion here. And then it goes straight to this all closing. So now what I'm gonna do is layer new solid. This is, I swear, the last part. <laughs> I promise you this is the last part. Rotate this. Doesn't have to be perfect. It can be just like that. I'm gonna make this a 3D layer. With, uh, before I make it a 3D layer though, actually, let me uh, move the anchor point to the bottom. Now make it 3D. Duplicate this, rotate it. Um, you just do plus 180. And what you need to do is kind of move these up one or two pixels to cover up with the black line that it will create. So let's see, animation ends, and now we're ready to move. P on the keyboard, 
up to the end. And now bring these bad boys open. Now I can select both of these, Control Shift C. And change the track map. So it ends kind of right there. And perfect. Now I could just smooth out these keyframes and see what we got. So that's about it. That's literally all you have to do. Real simple, right? It's just real one, two, three. Um, step one, draw a shape. Step three, you're done. Um, if you enjoyed this video, give it a like. If you wanna see more, subscribe. Be sure to check out other videos on this channel. I know an hour long video is um, a little extreme and I think most people will not watch it. But if you do, I hope you enjoyed. Anyways, guys, I hope you learned something new. Thanks for watching.